peer to peer means person to person, people to people, peer to peer. And it's based on the, the general idea that it is not possible because of the networks and the internet that people from all over the world can connect with each other but also work together to create common value. And this is something we call peer production, common space peer production. And the P2P Foundation is a global collaboratory, research collaboratory, to monitor, observe and try to understand peer production, peer governance and peer property. Yeah. But we also kind of engage, so it's not just objective uh, science, we are observing but also promoting at the same time. So it's more like a, you know, action research kind of okay. thing, right? We, yeah. yeah. So where does this interest come from? Well, you know, basically based on analysis of the current problems that we have in the world and to summarize it in a very simplistic way would be that we combine pseudo-abundance in the material world with artificial scarcity in the immaterial world. So we think that nature is infinite, so we you know, extract resources and we don't think about regeneration of nature. And then we create all these problems like biodiversity loss and global climate change. But then we have copyright uh, patents that actually make it more difficult for people to share their knowledge. And this is a problem. And so peer-to-peer -peer is a way of producing value where you create a community, you have community-based design, and therefore you don't design for the market, you don't design for scarcity, you design for sustainability as a kind of like normal thing to do because you do it as a community. And it's based on sharing knowledge. So there should be no scarcity in sharing knowledge because in especially in the digital world, reproducing knowledge is really easy at marginal cost. Mm. Making something once has a cost, but then making it two million times is not more expensive than making it once. Mm. Do you have any example you can share with me? Well, it's a classic example. It's an open source car called Wikispeed. It was done by about 80 people in a dozen countries. And in, I think, three months time, they designed a car from scratch that has a five times more fuel efficient uh, motor than industrial cars. So uh, again, it's sustainable from the get-go. It's based on participatory design, so people in the whole world can design parts of the car. Everything is crash tested. Um, and it's based then on actually producing it in a distributed way as well. So you, the concept is that of micro factories that would be in the whole world you download the design, you make the car using 3D printing machines that you know you specialize a little bit and you have a virtual assembly line mm. that allows you to manufacture on demand. So if you're a company or you know just a few people making a car based on such a design and you can make it when they ask for it, you have no extra production. So it's no need for marketing, for wasting you know, it really changes the way you you look at how to produce value. I think that we're in the field of social entrepreneurship and social innovation that you know I'm working yeah. in. Um, we talk a lot about collaborative economy. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the same, or do you yes, see? Yes, uh, but you know there are different ways to collaborating. Uh, for example, collaborative consumption, right? Uh, which is you mutualize physical resources, like car sharing, bike sharing. But then you have issues of well, who has the knowledge? Is it really shared? Yeah. Is it governed by its users or not? Uh, is it owned privately or is it a collective good? So collaboration can have many different meanings and our notion of commons oriented people actually is very specific. You have to share the knowledge as a common good. Okay. So crowdsourcing, for example, is not peer production because people compete to make a logo for a client they don't share with each other, right? Okay, yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. And sharing on Facebook, again, is different because you share something that you like with somebody else, but you're not, co you're not constructing something in common. Okay. So it has a very specific definition. Yeah. Do you see any differences between regions? Yeah. Um, 
uh, you know, for example, in Asia, uh, this is a bit of a problem as a European that I have, I guess, you know, there is a kind of hierarchical imaginary, a social imaginary. People, you know, are very status conscious. They always relate to each other, like in the Thai language, you know, you're, uh, you're P, or what's the other word, P or Nong, so you're always either under or above. And so the notion of peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, it's egalitarian ethos, is a bit more difficult. Um, to to accept, while in a European country, Western culture, you know, it's, it's been in our, you know, we don't practice it, but it's been our social imaginary, right? So we have a desire for equality. So it depends. So those are like regional cultural issues that can hinder the adoption of those practices. Mm. So what are the challenges of having this? kind of you know operation or this kind of collaboration that you're talking about? Um, well the well first of all you have to pre be predisposed for it, right? You have to have a willingness to share and work together and that requires a set of human skills that are not always obvious to have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know remember I, I remember when I was young and we had some Polish uh, people coming to our school and they would we call it cheating. Yep. Right, because we had learned to everybody does his own thing and doesn't share with a neighbor. You know, now that I look at it now with my vision on, on the commons, I said, well, maybe they were actually sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, while we were competitive and mm -hmm. not sharing. Uh, so you have to have a predisposition and some human skills that enable you to share. It's, it's not obvious. No. Um, then of course you have to act, you have to have physical access to those networks and you have to have a s technical skills to be able to use those networks. Mm. So these are all obstacles that yeah. that are coming the way. Do you see any patterns of how the development will be or has been and will be in the yeah. future? Well, you know, you always start with low hanging fruit and the low hanging fruit was knowledge and software code. Because uh, if you produce knowledge, it's immediately usable. And if you write software, it's immediately executable, right? So you're actually, by writing software, you're actually producing the thing. Uh, but making physical stuff is more demanding, right? Because you can have an open design, uh, like a motherboard. Maybe, you know, this is a very popular thing called Arduino. But then you have to make it. And those materials cost money, right? So the big thing now is how to, it's happening, but it's happening slowly and difficultly, is how do we move from just immaterial peer production to actually material peer production. Okay. And the vision is in immaterial peer production, I can allocate my knowledge, my skills, my effort to a collective project without asking permission. What if we would do this with money, crowdfunding, social lending? What if we do this with machinery, 3D printing? And so, what about energy? You know, consider your house as an energy producer, not just an energy you, uh, pr uh, consumer, right? Yeah. So we have distributed knowledge, distributed internet of energy, distributed internet of manufacturing. So you can see how this easily becomes a vision of the world, yeah. a way of conceiving how to organize a society because what happens in peer production is there is a commons and that's where the value is created and deposited by citizens volunteering their passionate effort then you usually have some foundations which protects the commons from private appropriation you know the licensing you know all the complexity funding the servers that you may need and then you have entrepreneurial coalitions and these are people who while contributing to the common pool also try to make a living from it. And these can be, you know, big corporations like IBM using Linux. Or they can be free software co-ops where coders, you know, create their own co-op and, and make a living by writing code for clients. They get paid for the labor, but they still produce the common pool at the same time. Now that we are talking about the commons and for me, it also relates to the values that we have as human beings yeah. you know, in society. And the way I see it, that within the capitalism 
um, when we're talking about values, it's really yeah. pretty much related to profit yeah. maximizing. Yeah. Um, so it's also about the values relate yeah. to who, who will receive right. the values. Yeah. Um, so in many ways, I really see this as building a new paradigm, yeah, I a new system. Yeah, I consider it a post-capitalist system, right? But of course, we're not there yet. We're in the process of doing this. And um, so, first of all, you know, we're producing a commons. This is not capitalism. No. Capitalism produces commodities. Yeah. Capitalism creates use value in order to realize exchange value. So we're actually making things to make a profit, mm. and hopefully they're useful. If they're not, we make people believe that it's useful, right? We have marketing and all of that. In peer production, we create directly use value, and then we create a market around it. Uh, we, we may make profit, but it's sub, uh, subsumed to a common goal, to a purpose. Purpose-driven, mission-oriented. Uh, so all these are differences. They, you know, there are market aspects to it, but they, there are really features that transcend the current system, and I think also solve some of its real issues. Yeah. And that is, it can be impossible to predict the future. Um, but you talked a lot about. I mean, I have the pleasure to attend your lecture, and yeah. you talk a lot about you know building up prototypes and yeah. and so how what does it take for us? Yeah. to go in from the prototype stage right. to yeah. where it becomes the mainstream. Yeah, well, you know, so imagine a series of patterns. And I, I often use historical examples. So the Italian city-state start growing after the 10th century. They need money. Um, but Catholics can't lend money because they go to hell if they do, right? So suddenly the church starts talking about purgatory. And you can buy indulgences to buy off your sins and therefore reduce your time in purgatory. Well, that allows Catholics to become bankers. Okay. It's, a pa it's a pattern, it's a solution to a problem. Yeah. Uh, then the Templars, they, you know, during the Crusades, they are supposed to protect the pilgrims and they also manage the gold. Well, instead of always, you know, going and bringing the gold back and forth, they invent double book accounting. You know, they just write it down, but they actually don't move the gold. So they invent something new, but by inventing this new pattern, people who use it also start thinking differently because, you know, oh, input and output have to be in balance, right? Now, all these things exist within a feudal system, but slowly but surely these patterns find each other. And then by the 18th century, we know this is capitalism. But in the 14th century, they didn't know it was capitalism. So with peer production, it's the same. We have all these patterns that are really solutions to problems that people are experiencing and you know they do free software they do open hardware they do seed commons but they may not know that these patterns are actually related and part of an emerging new system okay. what helps is if you know it and have your vision of the future you can start yeah. you know putting the patterns yeah. together much faster that's what I'm trying to do I'm not inventing anything I'm just kind of like putting more grease into the system by increasing the knowledge of the commonality of this pattern. Mm. So will this be, com instead of capitalism, will it be communism? <laughs> well, yeah, you, but you, when you say the word communism, you immediately know why it's problematic, oh. because it makes you think of another system, uh, but which was based on a centralized state, on coercion and, you know, and, and the common is totally different. It's based on the free allocation of resources. So it creates more freedom and I would argue more equality, but they're not opposed to each other and I think that's a great progress. And then also in this whole debate within capitalism is that, you know, if everybody is selfish, you create the common good, mm. you know, the invisible hand. And, yeah, exactly. And I think we have to question that. We have actually to integrate the common good. And peer production does that by design. Everybody contributes for the Wikipedia. For whatever reason, it's motivation agnostic. You still are making a universal encyclopedia, right? It's by design. So the externalities, the purpose, the mission are actually integrated in the structure itself. Mm. I think this is human progress. Yeah. This is 
what we need right now. We cannot have a system that creates wealth, but at the same time destroys the planet and creates more social inequality. And I think after 400 years, we know that doesn't work. So we have to put it back in, in the system. Doesn't mean necessarily that we have to abolish the market, but profit maximizing above everything else, I think that's wrong. So for me, it's really also about changing the assumption because you yeah. determine the invisible hand, yeah. but we have some assumption yeah. in you know economics that yeah. just more the way I see it outdated and unsustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about changing the assumption and yeah. then the values and then build up a yeah. new system supporting exactly. The new but you know the system is in crisis. Yeah. It's creating unemployment. It's creating many issues, and those young people are searching for solutions, right? And you have people who do that by choice because they are idealistic or but then a lot of people are driven out of the system as well right but and it's these margins that actually create innovation and then as more and more people see the crisis or experience the crisis they look for solutions and they see oh there are solutions there are solutions yeah and that is exactly what we also try to <laughs> illuminate here through make change tv Thank you so much for this short you, interview Julie. and it was my great pleasure to listen to you. It was uh, great to have you here and uh, in this uh, hot, in this hot and humid climate. Humid climate. climate. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm here in Bangkok at Chula what's the name? Chula Long Khor to attend the E C I R D. That's it, right? Yeah. Why did I stop? And it's my great, great, so I need to do this again.